Today we'll consider this dosimeter radiometer module and what makes it interesting. This module operates via I2C and completely covers work with the Geiger tube. There is a high voltage generator already built in and the controller calculates and returns a radiation ratio as well as the number of registered pulsations so that we don't need to do anything other than connect it to the I2C bus. It's powered by 3.3 volts only. Let's say with a 5 volt supply, it will burn out. The module is shipped with or without a Geiger tube. It's compatible with an SBM21 tube, but if we have some other Geiger tube, we can solder it in without any problems. The only thing that needs to be done in this case is to tune a sensitivity coefficient because it varies for different Geiger tubes. The module is equi equipped with a high quality XH2.54 connect with a double sided cable included. On the one hand, you can plug it into the connector and on the other to the usual distribution bus. The connector with now allow the, your module to disconnect inside the device, which ensures quality and long-term service. Let's look at the purchase options. As mentioned before, there are two versions available, with and without the Geiger tube. Geiger tube version's price is approximately 49 USD, and without a Geiger tube version, just 17 USD. In the description, there is all the necessary information provided, which library should be used, how to connect the module, its specification, like supply voltage, and its size. The library is available on the GitHub, with the module datasheet in a separate folder available both in Russian and in English. It's helpful if you are interested in registered or formula used for radiation calculation. There are two registers, a static one with a measured period of 500 seconds and dynamic one with a period variant based on how many pulsations are registered per second. A detailed register description is provided as well and connection specification, dimensions, etc. Let's take a look at the library itself. We developed a small sample for the demonstration purposes. There are a lot of comments added to the code and of course you can download the sample. We can get data from the sen sensor in two ways. If we need multiple values, for example, both static and dynamic, then it's best to call the get method. And after that, all these variables will be assigned with actual values and we can directly use them. If we only need a single value, then you can get it by calling one of those methods. The naming convention is self-explanatory. In response, we will receive one desired value. Let's take a look at the library with examples. In the beginning, we create a class object and initialize the module. Here we see some registers read-write options. For example, we can set the module sensitivity to calibrate the Geiger tube when replacing it or in case of incorrect measurements. This way we can turn off the high voltage generator for switching the module to the energy saving node. Next, we have the current sensor data read-only option with calling the appropriate methods. Reading with get method is not shown here. In this video demo, we'll later use the OLED display. And since we will display multiple values, so let's use radsense.get method. We'll receive the data and then read these variables. For example, in such a simple way, count of registered particles is implemented. This example is developed for two boards, ESP32 and any Arduino Atmega328. Now let's proceed to the Arduino uh, environment and upload the example library. Let's use this example with an Arduino Nano board and connect our module to it. We'll use an out-of-the-box cable that has XH2.54 connector on both sides. Let's cut it off on one side and replace with a regular 254 pin.
I would like to pay special attention that this part of the module is a high voltage generator. So try not touching it with your finger. It's safe, but not pleasant. Also, there is an LED on the module representing registered particles. Now let's deploy firmware. And we'll see the radiation measurements on the port monitor. I have an americium peel from the smoke detector. With its help, we can see the module reaction on the registered particles. The flashing of the LED is rapidly increased and the measured values are also increasing. Module counts two values, dynamic and static. Static has a period of 500 seconds and dynamic one changes the period based on the impulses change rate. Since the module is connected via uh, the I2C bus, our code is cross-platform. We can easily replace our board with ESP32. It has built-in Bluetooth, so we can develop, let's say, a dosimeter with a mobile application. But for now, let's just add a display. Let's take a look at firmware. We will use display library that supports multi-screens and is cross-platform. Therefore, this code can be deployed to Arduino with Atmega controller as well as to ESP32 or ESP8266. Connecting the display. And now we can see dynamic and static values of the radiation right on the display. It seems that the only thing that is missing here is a piezodynamic. As shown in the diagram, let's connect it to appropriate pins. Now we can identify registered particles not only by observing changing numbers on the screen, but also by hearing the sound. And we have successfully built a cheap dosimeter. Since our module with the Giger tube costs 49 bucks and Arduino controller and display in total costs less than 10, so for less than 60 USD we get a module with a little screen when the cheapest dosimeter starts at 70. And remember, climate matters. Goodbye.